All right, the writing Wren says, do a study on world everlasting, established forever, and kingdom within, please. All right, so that's a great um, request. And uh, I always enjoy doing these uh, Bible studies, these word studies, if you will. And, um, you know, when I first, uh, for example, when I first did a word study on earth and heaven, I went through each mention and I made sure I understood the context of each mention. But all the while I was looking at these words with a specific purpose and so like when we're doing it like we're gonna do a word study on these three phrases right here it to me it appears that we're looking for something specific and that would be <clears throat> um, the world that is and the world to come would be my guess right if I'm wrong, let me know, but it, it seems pretty apparent. That's, that's the idea that we're looking for when we do this word study, right? So let's start here. World everlasting, okay? We see four mentions. Uh, all this means is uh, this word and that word, that word and that word are in these verses, okay? So, because there's only four, I'm going to look at them anyway. All right. It has form. Okay. Before the mountains were brought forth, and ever thou hast formed the earth and the world, even from everlasting to everlasting, thou art God. All right. So, that's good stuff right there. Isaiah 45. But Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. Ye shall not be ashamed, nor confounded world without end all right so this is a great one here too let's verify some of the, what we're reading here and just real quickly here for i am not ashamed of the gospel of christ right he shall not be ashamed nor confounded right so god is not the author of confusion confounded confusion same thing God is not the author of confusion but of peace right oops never mind that where am I at here there we go okay in world without end so this is this is a uh, this could be important you know if you're kind of young new believer um, it's important to understand the context of this right here in particular I don't want you to get confused very simple the word the, the phrase world without end is in context to everlasting salvation all right it's not in context to the world that we're living in now and because we don't put our hope in this world we don't put our hope in an everlasting life in this world <clears throat> right so we're putting our hope in a world with no sin with no evilness with no wickedness whatsoever right we're putting our faith and hope in a world of everlasting life without evil all right so in the context world without end is the everlasting salvation that we have in the Lord Jesus Christ when he will stomp his foot on the head of the serpent and destroy evil forever make sense now we certainly do not put our hope in this world this wicked world is coming to an end we need a savior from this wicked world we need a savior from our sins right? Luke 18 who shall not receive manifold more in this present time and in the world to come life everlasting in the world to come right so the context of that again is life everlasting it's essentially the same thing when we apply this phrase with this phrase we connect the dots there and we see that there is a better world that waits for us 
right. in the world of everlasting life there will be no sin that's not you look if there was sin that's not I don't want it right a world full of misery a life everlasting in a world full of misery that's no good at all right and of course John 3 verse 16 for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believes in him should not perish but have everlasting life that's where our hope is right there everlasting life now let's move on to the next one established for ever right, so we got 13 mentions here Levit Leviticus 25 and if it be not redeemed within the space of a full year then the house that is in the walled city shall be established forever to him that bought it throughout his generations it shall not go out in the jubilee jubile or whatever that word is okay so um you know i you know i don't know i don't know so we i mean we could get into this that this is about jesus christ has bought us and redeemed us and we are established forever in him and all this sort of stuff i'm not sure if that's what we're looking for uh, in this phrase so let's just kind of quickly go through these here. First Samuel 13. For now would the Lord have established thy kingdom upon Israel forever. Thine house and thy kingdom shall be established forever. Before thee thy throne shall be established forever. And let thy name be magnified forever. Saying the Lord of hosts is the God of Israel. And let the house of thy servant David be established before thee. And King Solomon shall be blessed. And the throne of David shall be established before the Lord forever. But I will settle him in mine house and in my kingdom forever. And his throne shall be established forevermore. Therefore now, Lord, let the thing that thou hast spoken concerning thy servant and concerning his house be established forever, and do as thou hast said. Let it be established that thy name may be magnified forever, saying, The Lord of hosts is the God of Israel, even a God to Israel, and let the house of David thy servant be established before thee. And he built his sanctuary like high palaces like the earth, which he has established forever. Now, I wonder if we might be touching on what we're looking for here. Okay, so the earth, there, there's the, in the beginning God created the earth, all right, and then there's coming a new earth, all right. And it shall be established forever as the moon and as a faithful witness in heaven right so the moon again is established forever of course we won't have a need for the light of the moon or for the Sun in the life to come hereafter the lip of truth shall be established forever but a lying tongue is but for a moment that's good stuff right there right the king that faithfully judge the poor his throne shall be established forever art thou not from everlasting O Lord my God mine holy one we shall not die O Lord thou hast ordained them for judgment and O mighty God thou hast established them for correction all right so this is great stuff i'm not sure um specifically if you have any questions regarding any of these right but um it's to me it, it serves a you know a couple of purposes it helps me when i do these word studies to learn more about this whatever particular subject and it also clears doubt if I have any doubt if I wonder if, am I missing something right 
that I can check out these things, I can check out these phrases, I can read these books um, in the Bible, and it'll help give me confidence and take away that uncertainty. And uh, so it's a great thing to do, no question about it. I don't want to make this long, but if I'm um, if there's any one uh, specific thing that you want me to go over, wait a second, did I forget one? <clears throat> oh, I apologize, man. I, gee whiz. Oh, we got one more to do here. And kingdom within. Then shall stand, here in Daniel 11, then shall stand up the estate of a, a raiser of taxes in the glory of his of the kingdom but within a few days he shall be destroyed neither in anger nor in battle all right so i don't think that's the context or related to what we're looking for i think this is what we're looking for right here luke 17 verse 21 neither shall they say lo here or lo there for behold the kingdom of god is within you all right <clears throat> okay so um, it's only mentioned the one time and uh, you know I'm not sure uh, what we're, again I'm not sure exactly what you might be looking for uh, if I could explain this a little bit so the kingdom of God is within you and of course if we open up uh, Luke 17 read a little bit about the context it, it, and when he was demanded of the Pharisees when the kingdom of God should come, he answered them and said, The kingdom of God cometh not with observation, neither shall they say, Lo there, or lo here, or lo here, and lo there, before behold, the kingdom of God is within you. All right, and then, of course, he says, uh, Unto the disciples the days will come when ye shall desire to see one of the days of the Son of Man, and ye shall not see it. And they shall say to you, See here, or see there, go not after them, nor follow them. For as the lightning that lighten, lighten out of the one part under heaven shineth unto the other part under heaven, so shall also the Son of Man be in his day. But first must he suffer many things and be rejected of this generation. As it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be also in the days of the son of man <clears throat> they did eat and drink married wives they were given in marriage until the day uh, that noah entered into the ark and the flood came and destroyed them all likewise also as it was in the days of lot they did eat they drank they bought they sold planted building but in that same day that lot went out of sodom it rained brimstone from heaven and destroyed them all even thus shall it be in the day when the son of man is revealed now the only reason i read that is in partial context to what we're reading here um that the son that uh oh where's this at it comes not with observation oh the kingdom of god comes not with observation okay so behold the kingdom of god is within you all right so that it starts within you once you are born of the spirit of god the kingdom of god is in you okay so let's just go to a couple of verses here and i'm not sure if this is gonna help you at all but let's just take a look anyway jesus says verily verily i say unto you uh, that except a man be born again he cannot see the kingdom of god Verily, verily, I say unto thee, except a man be born of water and of the Spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. Okay. <clears throat> okay, excuse me. And then, of course, um, you know, first we have to be born of the Spirit of God. Now, what am I looking for here? Right here. But seek, but rather seek ye the kingdom of God, and all these things shall be added to you. So here in Luke 12, he's talking about first seeking the kingdom of God. Alright, so he's talking about all these things. So um, this is what I like. I love this verse here, or this uh, chapter. 
Alright, consider the lilies, how they grow, they toil not, they spend not, yet I say unto you that Solomon in all his glory was not arrayed like one of these. Right, so um, you see, you probably know a lot of people that like to worry. They worry all the time. They worry about this and they worry about that. They worry about what they're going to eat. They worry about what they're going to wear. They worry about paying bills and, you know, all this sort of stuff. Worry, worry, worry. And of course, I'll always say, well, look, you could spend all day worrying yourself to death, wake up tomorrow, walk outside and get run over by a bus. And all that worrying you did today would have been for nothing. Right? So just enjoy today. God is going to take care of you. God takes care of all of us. If God so clothed the grass which is today in the field and tomorrow is cast in the oven, how much more will he clothe you, O ye of little faith? And seek not what ye and seek not ye what ye shall eat or what ye shall drink neither be ye of doubtful mind for all these things do the nations of the world seek after and your father knows that ye need that ye have need of these things but rather seek ye the kingdom of God and all these things shall be added unto you fear not little flock for it is your father's good pleasure to give you the kingdom all right now um uh, so this is good stuff here this is great i love it so um the very first thing the most important thing is being born of the spirit of god having the kingdom of god in you just like what we read in john chapter three all right you must be born again Except a man be born of water and of spirit, he cannot enter into the kingdom of God. And again, except a man be born again, he cannot see the kingdom of God. So, first of all, uh, being saved, that's the number one. There's nothing more important. Single most important thing in anybody's life is being born of the spirit of God. Alright, and then after that, you know, just really you don't have anything at all to worry about now once you're saved you're sealed secure forever God's taking care of he takes care of the unsaved the unjust just as much he and if he loves them how much more does he love us right think about there's another verse in here too I probably skipped right over it but anyways nevertheless so the king of God is within you in my opinion it starts within you all right and that's the way god has made us that we have this void that can only be filled with the spirit of god only god can fill it right and that's just the way he's made us all the way back to the beginning okay so i'll just end it right there thank you writing wren appreciate the request